Welcome to Strength in the Numbers. My name is Andrew Codd, accountant, author, and commercial finance entrepreneur. And it's my job each week to bring you leaders in finance and business and deconstruct with them their real stories, insights, and hard-won lessons into practical advice on the key strengths and qualities you need to remain relevant in accounting and finance today, as well as the steps you can begin to take to elevate the impact you make to have a fun, successful, and rewarding career in accounting and finance. Now let's go over to the show. Hi everyone, and our guest mentor today is James Perry, and James is probably the only independent and dedicated exam coach for accounting and finance that I'm aware of on the planet, and it's a great coincidence that he's also based out of Ireland. Now James is a chartered accountant, he's also the owner of jamesperryexamcoaching.com, and his business is really offering clients around the world a unique and fresh perspective to, on how to exceed in their own exams and reach their potential within their careers. And the great thing about our conversation is the transferability of the skills that you can learn going through the exam process to having rewarding and successful experiences further on in your career. Now, we cover a number of key areas on this episode. The first one being where James's passion for exam coaching came from and the story behind why he's so passionate about helping others through the process. Uh, there's also a common first question he asks his exam coaching clients that, in fact, we all really should know the answer to anyway, particularly if we want to have fun, rewarding and successful careers. And our conversation is littered with a number of practical tips you know, to improve our finance and accounting exam and career success. Now, James and myself jump straight into the conversation and we share some sort of philosophical thoughts around business to begin with and get in towards more of the exam coaching element towards the latter part of the episode. So I encourage you to check out the detailed timestamp show notes at SITN show slash podcast slash 030, the conversation that will be most relevant for you. So I really enjoyed this one. I know you will too. So without further ado, over to James and the show. I know one of the questions you were saying to me, what sort of advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Well, the two things I would do is start reading big time because at the age of 20, going through uni, I was studying so much, I didn't actually go and read about other things. I was just, in my opinion, I was so bombarded with books. Do you need that break to go and expand your mind in other directions? And the other one is go and get a mentor. Go and get somebody who is like-minded as you and will drive you in the direction. And like you quite rightly said, will be the devil's advocate. If you've got a problem, I would definitely tell my 20 year old self that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's weird, like, you know, when I suppose when you're helping people with their exams and walking them through the syllabus or whatever, where does it say in the syllabus how to become a devil's advocate and how to play that role? It, it doesn't say it anywhere. It doesn't say that, you know, another thing, another tip that I say to people, actually, the best way to learn is to teach somebody else. A complete, oh, that, that's my advice to the people I mentor need that sort of devil's advocate to go, oh, you're talking about whatever. Somebody's struggling with consolidating, right? Or oh, whatever accounting technique. And you go, right, how do you do a cost of control account? You do it. No, you don't. You do it this way. And that's automatically where it'll click much quicker than reading the book. And that's the sort of stuff. It just, yeah, getting like minute people. I'm now trying to facilitate study groups. Um, okay, people, sometimes people like doing one to one, and I did too, but occasionally mixing it up with, with, with other people having exactly the same problems. One thing, whenever I was a trainee in Grand Thornton, was that there was four of us, four of us started in 2003 in the same day, and every one of us held us, held each other, held us accountable uh, and bounced ideas of each other and gave us that support network, which you need. No, no, but it comes, I, no, but like, I think generally speaking, people, it's really weird. It's like, but I'm still trying to put my nail on, like, how do you say, why does it work, you know, whatever. But I think people just want, I don't know, they just want connection. They want to be able to relate to people. It doesn't matter where they are in the world. I mean, what do you think? Why, why is that the case? I just think people now want to see different perspectives of everything. Um, the world for how many thousand years have been has been sort of silos and whatever else. But look, in mid nineties, whatever, there was a thing called the internet and it's just a completely changed everything. And to learn from, I think we were talking about the last time, how the world changes in different phases. So like playing obviously revolutionized everything. The internet's revolutionized everything, but I love 
just different cultures and, and seeing how people do things in different ways. Ah, and that's true. It, it probably is. It's actually quite an Irish thing, I think, because of the way you, you do get people in Ireland who maybe are quite insular, but you get the other people who, I mean, it's because we had to travel around the world. Yeah. You know, we We're have to do that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and for such a small country, like, there's Irish all around the world. And I think maybe that's coming from our background where we had to go away and then mix in with all the cultures. Uh, business is changing, in my opinion. In what way? Hugely, in my opinion, from the corporate cutthroat, cutthroat culture to my opinion where people are going, yes, there has to be. There's that term EQ, the emotional yeah. intelligence piece. That's true. People are people now. People yeah. aren't commodities. And that's where I think business is changing. So there's a the great photograph of you ever seen of Barack Obama shaking the hand of the janitor of the White House. Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. And I think that's typifying business where he acknowledged the smallest cog in the massive machine of the White House. And he says, you're just as important as me. You keep this place in great order. Yeah. And I think that's the way business is going, that now you have to acknowledge... It's it's so true. Like um, like my 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 father was a site manager. So like you know, another I suppose a flashier term for a caretaker. So yeah. I completely understand what the the cleaners and the caretakers do to keep the businesses going, the facilities clean. And it's, it's like it was one of the clients I work at. I know all the cleaners' names, you know, the site managers' names. They can't do enough for you. But yeah. you know, I don't. I, you know, I don't feel maybe some of the the people have been a bit business a bit longer, or those being sort of cultured in a particular way. You can't forget the all the cogs in the machine. The word psychology to me five years ago meant a very very different <laughs> thing than what it does now, <laughs> right? And maybe this is the, the change even in the corporate thing, right? So five years ago to me, the word psychology was what I would call fluffy, right? It didn't mean very much to me because I fully qualified accountant pre-programmed, articulate, logical, my head works like a spreadsheet. So whenever then you're pushed through maybe the corporate culture and other stuff that happened in my life to the verge of that spreadsheet disappearing, you go, oh my God. And then you actually understand, yeah, your mindset is key. Your psychology is key. And that's why I went into this business now in terms of helping others with their mindset and pushing through their accountancy exams. So it's not necessarily about the corporate culture or about people passing the exams. To me, it's the other stuff now is just as important. To talk to you about this uh, on James, so rather get my views on it, I'd love to get more of yours. But what you're nailing on is, is I've been following for the last few years the two main mega trends in, in finance and accounting. In my mind's uh, digitization mm -hmm. and what we call business partnering. One is sort of the hard technical piece that that robotics and artificial intelligence cognitive computing is coming in and doing the work we used to do on the technical side and then on the other side the finance business partnering is more about that that eq that social intelligence the stuff where we're actually having to be more human so actually Completely. the way things are going in finance and accounting is we're being trained in the technicals yet the the profession's going to be more human so, and, and it's interesting you've touched on that. So you're seeing the next crop of accountants coming, coming through with their exams, whatever. So, so what are people doing about it? How are they feeling about it? So, well, well, the processing is going to be replaced by advisory. That's definitely I see it. You need to be, and you know, I, I, this is probably even the case since I was a trainee where accountants aren't being counters anymore at all. No, no. Uh, we have to be, and this is the reason why, Andrew, I am so passionate about, okay, I'm not necessarily an accountant who wants to be an accountant anymore, but what I am passionate about is getting people to achieve this incredibly, wonderfully credible qualification. Yeah. Because it's so much more than just numbers. So you have to be a, a rounded business advisor completely. Uh, and that's where the personality, the softer skills, um, actually building rapport with whether it be your staff or whether it be a client, to me, it's such it's so important now because the processing does take care of itself. It Albeit, does, yeah. Yes, you have to have an awareness and knowledge of the technical stuff. There's a new accounting standard coming out. You need to know that. I, I completely get into that. But, you know, getting people on your side, if you have got a wonderful idea or a wonderful project, getting people on board to follow you on that and support you on it, to me, is more key now. 
you know, just, just some of the dots are connecting in our conversation here. You're talking about the key thing when it comes to the exams is mindset and you're helping prepare mm-hmm. people's mindset, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine if we're helping getting people's mindsets right as they're coming towards exams. And if they could repeat that process throughout the rest of the career, they'd probably have quite a rewarding, fun and successful career. Yeah. So I know you, you've got a business doing this, but do you mind sharing maybe some sort of the key things to help people at their mindset so they can get that right, get the exams right, and maybe even the rest of their careers right? It's the first question that I ask, um, Andrew, in the first session that I have with any accountancy student. And I go, what's the most important thing in your life? And they go, mm, family, boyfriend, whatever. I go, is it not your mind? Because without your mind, you will not be able to comprehend any of this. And they look at me sideways, exactly the same look that I would have given if somebody asked me that five years ago. And they look at me squarely and I I go, okay, we need to get you sort of primed here. Because passing exams is a very psychological thing, much more sometimes than knowing the stuff. You know, I think I said to you before, like the vast majority of people who fail exams, they know the stuff. It's just there's something else. So whether it be the technique of time management or, or reading the question, you know, they haven't read the question properly or they take the mental block. So that's where the, the mindset piece for me comes in initially. But the, the other thing, the first session that I do with my clients, Andrew, is, is a motivation session where it, I've called a couple of schools of thought. And this, to me, motivation on its own isn't particularly useful because I believe you have to have hard work and action um, coupled along with that. You can sit and watch YouTube videos until the cows come home. But unless you get up and do something about it and put the study plan in place and stick to it. But the the other thing in terms of mindset is whenever things go wrong, what's what are you going to cling on to that's going to drive you through? And again, I briefly mentioned my mother. So my mother had MS for 47 years, was in a coma for the last 14 years of her life. And she was my driving force. So I challenge people. I give this talk in schools about motivation, about mindset. And I would say, right, guys, GCSEs, for example, or, or in university students doing accountancy mm-hmm. degrees, going, okay, guys, remember this goes wrong, which it will. Something will happen to you. What can you grasp to drive you forward? So do you see yourself as a business person? Do you see yourself owning your own business? Do you see yourself being a partner in a firm? Do you do it for job status? Do you do it for the money? We, we should be able to admit that we do these things for money. What's the driving force? And that gives you a very much a different perspective on exams and the mindset for it. It's not just this drudgery or this process that you have to go through. There isn't a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And once you frame that initially up front, people look at you and you go, okay. But then the key thing is, is that once I have the conversation with someone, they'll be pumped up and mega driven maybe for an hour or a day after. It's whenever yeah. I'm not there. Yeah, uh, I, I, <laughs> I've got this image of like people talk to you coming away absolutely all psyched up and whatever work, you know, worked into a really positive state. And like, how do you, how, so how do you maintain that? How can they maintain that then? Is what I've said in terms of surrounding yourself with like many people have an accountability partner that you can touch on every single day. Now, if you're three months away from an exam, that could be me. Mm-hmm. And I've said to people, ring me, you know, two or three minute conversation, two or three times a week. That's great. I love that. And I will, if you want a rocket from me, I will give you a rocket. <laughs> you know, if you need somebody to shout at you, I'll do it. Yeah. But if it's your mum, if it's your wife, if it's whoever, that person, and that can if they uh, you buy in from them people too those people that support you they need to be there for you on the, in, in this this sort of period so that's sort of that piece and then i suggest about how do people the, the other bit is how do people deal with anxiety that's another thing i see yeah yeah which is hugely interesting <laughs> you're, talk, you're talking about anxiety with the with the kind of exams <laughs> got me sideways there was a very uh, a, a person that failed one paper um her acca exams she failed the paper five times and it was the only paper she had to do to become fully qualified ah, and God, it was actually one of the easier paper it was one of the easier papers and she went james i don't know why i can't pass this it was a build-up so the first time she failed that she couldn't believe it. Second time that put a fear in her mind. 
third time snowball effect happened. So I gave her, I mentioned one thing to her which revolutionized her study and her exam process, and that was meditation. And she looked at me absolutely that I had two heads. She said, what? I went, before every study session, I want you, and there's a, there's a wee program, there's YouTube's full of this. Lie on your bed, get the earphones, plug them in, and count your breaths for half an hour. Do that before every study session to get your mind ultra relaxed for to be in a state to absorb information. But most importantly, if you panic in an exam, you do many meditation, you close your eyes and you breathe for a minute. Then that'll get you to refocus again. And thankfully she passed the exam. And she oh, that's a great story. James, undoubtedly, that's the reason why I passed. It wasn't for any technical um, tip. It wasn't for any time management. It wasn't for any, it was the simple fact that she was able to manage her anxiety in the middle of an exam and especially the build up to an exam. So Andrew, I do exam technique sessions with people and I talk to them about the night before. I firmly believe people can feel exams the night before the exam. Wow. That, wow. Do, oh, Why is that? Oh, oh psychologically. So they the night before. will do all nighters. They'll study so, all night. So, so, they, so, so, they've, so they've done all this work, right? They've, they've probably done a load of past papers. They've got to the final night before the exam. You're, still, you're saying that they can still fail? Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, another, another example of this, another, a guy came up to me and um, <laughs> unfortunately he, he rung me the, on the Friday night before the, before the Monday, uh, before the, the, the exam was the Monday. And I'm going, man, you should have rung me weeks before. But this is how it manifested in him. He took profuse sweating in his hands. Oh. Mm -hmm. And he was left-handed, which meant whenever it was a written paper, he was smudging the paper. Of course, because it's going, yeah, yeah. I'm going, so that's how this was manifesting. I'm going, man, this is unbelievable. So we talked about a few things. He went to the doctor and the powder they gave him made his hands come out in blisters. Oh. So Poor it's like, oh, they're stuck out oh, completely. And thankfully he passed it and he's a fully qualified accountant. But it was just literally having that, that third party who has no connection. And he was bouncing ideas off me about this question, this question, this question. And whenever we were talking, the pain in his hand, he never even th once mentioned his hands. But then thankfully he passed it. But it was the fact he was able to bounce it. He got so wrapped up in his own spiral and yeah. um, in, in his mind regarding, oh my God, I feel this before, I feel this before. It manifested in his hands sweating. He got caught in this trap. And that's where I come along and actually just put, the, the way I break it down is like this, um, Andrew, accountants are, Quite logical <laughs> beings. But whenever you're a trainee accountant preparing for an exam, whenever whenever emotions come in, your logic jumps out the window. Mm -hmm. your, your, your rationality jumps out the window. And that's where you sometimes have to take a stand back and go, okay, we need to put that, this in a process. And that's what I, what I tend to do with students. I'm just sort of trying to think, you know, like longer term, you know, when you look, you know, look around the offices and, and the people that, that seem to progress and have the most, and not necessarily progress, but even just enjoy their careers, they're the ones that tend to not leave emotions, get the better of them. Completely. So, you know, get it right in the exams, not only you pass them, but actually it sets you up quite well to have a good career. Without a shadow of a doubt. And there are people that learn from others. So you're talking about books, you know... Uh, is it the top CEOs in America, they read up to 50 books a year or something like that? Yeah, uh, look, uh, yeah, and um, and actually even, I suppose, successful entrepreneurs I, I, I've, I've worked with and, and, and so on, they read an awful lot of books. Mm. And, and they probably wouldn't regard themselves as educated by our classical standards of qualifications and degrees and whatever. Yeah. So, so like, uh, you know, like in terms of yourself... James, I know I know you've read quite a lot of books as well. Like, what what yeah. would be your sort of favorite recommendations for our listeners? Um, at the minute, there there are two books, and the first one I read about a year and a half ago called Entrepreneur Revolution by a guy <laughs> called Daniel Priestley. And where it copied great writer. First, first of all, it was a very easy read. I didn't actually want to leave it down. You know, there's some books sometimes you get caught up and you just don't want to finish it. I wanted to get to the end of this. I really enjoyed it. Really well written. 
the other bit of it was he actually explained the generations that were going through. So first of all, it was the agricultural revolution and mm -hmm. people were farmers and then was the industrial revolution. My father was a product of that because he was an engineer. And that was the generation where, and you maybe understand this, that you had a job and it was for life. Yeah. And my dad was an engineer in the same place for 35 years because he had to be. But we're now in the entrepreneur revolution and maybe touching on, you know, the whole internet has changed the landscape. And we can't, if you are passionate about something, you actually can go and make a living and a business out of this. Um, and that's where that book was coming from. And even breaking down really, really common sense tips. Like, how many people have you actually rung that you need to have a conversation with, but you're maybe a bit of a keyboard warrior and you hide behind, <laughs> you know, go and contact people, people yeah. deal with people. Yeah. He said, okay. And he talked about a mentor, actually. He said, you um, go and get a mentor or someone you, 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 you respect, go and invite them out for lunch. If they're a local person, go and invite them out for lunch. Go and buy a lunch for 100 quid for them and, and spend two hours in their company. Oh, yeah. So that could be the greatest 100 pounds you ever spend. And I think that was, that was a great book in that. The best audio book I've listened to, um, and not necessarily an audio book as such, but I, down, I got it from someone and downloaded it. It was from Jim Rowan. And oh. it's spoken away. It, 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 it's in the 60s and 70s. You know it's recorded then. But it's the seven, it's, I mean, I've written it down actually. Where is it? It's the seven, the seven strategies for wealth and happiness. And it's about three and a half hours long. But oh, there's so much common sense in it. And sometimes we get lost in, in, in the words of fancy damn things. But sometimes the common sense is the approach. You know, I, I, he's talking about have a plan. A number of students that I talk to that don't have a study plan. And they don't have a life plan for the three months and build up to their exam. Things like that. And then he then also mentioned about the sphere of influence. So not only do you influence others, others influence you. And he talked about peers. And then you know you're the you're the average of the five that you hang about with. I, I I mean I don't know about you, but looking back across our careers and where we are, those things they're such great common sense, and and I suppose I mean they're so good common sense. How the heck did we miss them? <laughs> uh, maybe touching back on the whole corporate thing and the whole you know academia and the corporate world. Yeah. Whenever maybe we were going through the process. Yeah. It didn't teach us that. Yeah, no, I, I, I look, I've got to, I, you know, I think, you know, you're, you very much take personal responsibility like I do. I think self-awareness is also, you know, part of that. Like we just weren't probably, te we didn't teach ourselves how to be aware of what was going on. We didn't have, as probably as we should, these accountability partners or mentors just to bounce things off of that probably would have helped trap them earlier. But it's, it's now coming through, through this. I was actually read an article and I'm, I'm reading a, a small piece of the man on this EQ, this emotional intelligence thing, where people are people. And yep. I think corporates are now saying that in business, the world of business is now recognizing this and going, hey, we need to be aware of our staff and we need to make our staff aware maybe. Yeah. And everything comes in. You know, if you've got a happy employee, they're going to work damn hard for you. You know, right. so this common sense stuff is coming back into, into vogue. Yeah. I suppose then looking towards, I mean, this is, we talk about the now here, but looking towards the future, like sort of what things are exciting you about what, what maybe the next 12 months hold? Uh, the next 12 months, well, the next six months even for me <laughs> is, is unbelievably exciting. So I want to have an online product developed, which encompasses a lot of stuff we've just spoken about. So this will be a very unique product. Um, if people are expecting hugely technical things, there will be technical accountancy advice in there, but there will be all the other stuff we'll be talking about. So the power of mindset, the programming, your subconscious mind, how do you relax, um, how do you manage your anxiety, time management, all this other stuff. And that's when I'm in the process of developing in a minute. So there'll be eBooks, there'll be blogs, podcasts, and videos that are going to be recorded as well and interviews with other like-minded um, people and accountants and successful business people. So it's going to be a quite a unique product that I'm going to be developing. And that's where the next six months goes, which I'm really excited about. Albeit that being a relatively new entrepreneur, I'm learning as I go along, but surrounding myself with the people that I need to talk to. And that's what I've been doing the last couple of weeks is talking to his many people as possible to get as many ideas or to get you know as much support as possible 
I, I was going to say, I, no, I did really want to ask you a question on that journey um, yes. as, as a sort of relatively new entrepreneur. Like how, in your mind, did you have any particular expectations when you when you set out on that journey? Not in the slightest. It all <laughs> cropped, you know, it all cropped <laughs> up from, from nothing. The journey, how I became an exam coach, Andrew, is I've always enjoyed helping people. So I was senior manager in a firm called Grant Thornton, global recognized accountancy firm. I was senior manager in Belfast and I loved um, helping the, the audit trainees of who, and I really loved helping them through, especially the exams would help them with bits and pieces with that. Previously, I'd lectured in Queens and Jordan, uh, and sorry, University of Ulster at Jordanstown. And I also had a succumbent to Grant Thornton's training set, national training center outside London. So I'd spent a three month stint in teaching, well, sorry, we wouldn't even say teaching, training, which was slightly different. Um, basic bookkeeping and auditing. So that sort of whetted the appetite of, I really enjoy this. I, I would, But then I went back into the corporate bit. Um, I suppose I had, there was moodings of sort of partnership uh, and, and, you know, I could be a partner at Grant Thornton earning a really, really fantastic salary. So then that overtook the, the helping people bit in, in that respect. So, Right, all guns blazing, let's go and get this. And then I, after about a year and a half, I realized that wasn't necessarily for me. I then went and became, worked in WKD, uh, financial controller for WKD, and I always have to say, yes, it is the drink. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, you know, a half a billion pound business. And that was a fairly big baptism of fire within industry. Was there for a couple of years, but I loved it helping my finance team and this then starting cropping up again. This is really what I enjoy. So then what happens a fairly big life changing moment happened for me about three years ago and a few other things came out of that. And I actually woke up one morning, whether this was the subconscious telling me something, I woke up one morning and I said, okay, this hobby and helping people, I can turn this into a business. And that's where the term exam coach came out of. And nobody really understands what an exam coach is because there's not very many. I think I'm possibly the only one I've ever <laughs> tell of anyway. So yes, I am a tutor, I am a lecturer, and I do that in a different guise. But an exam coach is simply, yeah, you've got a coach in the gym, you have got a coach if you play sports. Why not maybe your coach for helping you through accountancy exams? And it's it's the prompting and it's the advice rather than actually going through the whole content you know you're gonna have you're gonna go to a financial institution or a lecture or whatever to do that but i helped you with the other stuff done it for a girl in london randomly got this contact from a girl in london done it through skype and i went this is interesting this can be a business so i was in a government job then for three years um and done it as a hobby but um, over the last two years, while I started this out as a hobby, I got 60 clients. I had clients from Jamaica, New York, New Zealand, Bulgaria, the world. Wow. Cyprus, from Ireland, from GB, and I'm going, this is nuts. So I made then the decision um, of taking a career break, which started in December, to really push this forward as a hugely viable business. And then it goes even more global with LinkedIn and the influence there that, and me and you have seen the benefits of that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just phenomenal how it's taken off. People are telling me around the world there's a need for this. Yeah, it's, go, it's... Okay, let's, let's, let's make this work. I mean, look, uh, before this call, I always knew exams were important and I completely agree with you. I, it's a, But I just didn't quite appreciate how much if you get the mindset right when you're doing exams, you can actually follow that forward, even down to having Maybe. proper plan for your exams. You know, I'm just hitting myself over the head. I, I remember having those and I did quite well in my exams, but I never transferred that into my career in yeah. terms of having that plan. In terms of having those study groups, uh, keeping ourselves accountable uh, towards the exams. Again, it, when I was at school or college or whatever, I never decided to follow that through into my career. And yeah. now I've got those accountability groups and then the career goes absolutely exponential off of that. 
Um, and like that's why, again, I think I did the mentoring because that was the thing that rubbed it home for me the most was when people invested time in me and it cost them, ab- you know, and they got not next to nothing in return, mm-hmm. but they were willing to give their time for me for absolutely nothing. Then I feel like that's why we need to do these shows and bring mentors like yourself uh, to, to the world because I think we're all in a similar boat here. We want to give back because people have given to us. I'll, so, I'll, give, I'll give an example of that, Andrew. Um, two years ago, whenever I sort of started out doing this, a guy contacted me a week out from doing his finals for Chartered Accountants Ireland. Mm-hmm. And he failed the previous year. And he said this was the, the monkey on the, on the back or you know the millstone around the neck or whatever way you want to put it from the previous January. This was August. So the previous, he had failed it the previous August and from the January then after that, he felt the fear big time. Oh. He said it was affecting everything. But he rung me with one week to go. <laughs> and he was swearing. He was emotional. He was whatever. And he turned around and he said, James, I'm not doing this. Why am I putting myself through this? Now, to put this in some sort of context, he was off on study leave for the previous seven weeks and studying every hour God sent for seven weeks. So the emotions were coming in. The emotions were coming in and wrecking the logic. And so I went to see him, drove to his house in Belfast, and we had a conversation. And he said, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this. Why am I putting myself through all this? And I went, hold on. You've got one week to go. You've spent the last seven weeks studying. You know the knowledge. Um, I said, how many past papers have you done? None. All right, right, okay. You're doing four for me. And I'm going to mark them. And I'm going to do a fine tooth comb through all these. And the greatest achievement was, Andrew, for me, not marking his past papers, not necessarily the conversations, but the fact that he turned up on the next, the Monday of the next week to do his finals, he actually turned up. That was my greatest achievement. Why? Because he's now a fully qualified chartered accountant doing a career that he now wants to do. And the number of people who've said to me, this is more than money, now, what, what I'm going to say to you, the number of people that are coming up to me Andrew, and saying, James, you're changing people's lives. Mm-hmm. I never, ever thought of that. Yeah, well, never, never thought of it like that. That you're taking someone's career and their life from here to here, you know, from one level to another. And it is because, my, like I said before, maybe I'm an accountant that doesn't necessarily want to be an accountant anymore. But what I am a huge advocate of is that I will help people succeed in their accountancy exams, get this hugely credible qualification, which you say adds so many strings to your bow. Yeah in terms of not only a qualification, but you as a person. And then I say, go and do what you want to do in your life because we're in that generation that we now can do that. So my mantra is I'll give you the tools to get this fantastic qualification for you to go and change your life and do what you want to do in your life. And that's and that, ultimately my end game. I can, I can already sort of sense there'll be a lot of people interested in following up with you after this podcast, James, because I mean, I think it's it's like a platform, you know, the exams are such a pivotal times in people's careers. It, it could really, you know, give a really good start. And actually what people learn through the process could also stand them well for future in their careers. So, I mean, you know, in case people want to sort of reach out and get to know you a bit more and connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? The best way is I'm on um, Facebook and Facebook business pages, but LinkedIn is a big thing for me. Um, so connect with me on LinkedIn, James Perry Exam Coaching. Also on the Facebook page, I would love to help whoever. Um, and it's, do you know what, what the great thing is, Andrew? Is the fact, glo- accounting is a global language. Okay. And, you know, and that's the reason why I push it as such a great career because, you know, in the main, accounting is accounting around the world. Okay. There's the odd difference in accounting standards, but in the main, where there are thereabouts. So someone can be qualified accountant in Ireland and go and work in Australia. So, you know, <clears throat> it's a qualification that you can be a project manager because you do projects all the time. Studying for your accounting, accountancy exams is project management. <laughs> you know, you show that you've got discipline. You're obviously fantastic with figures. You're going to be analytical. You know, you can travel the world. It's just everything in the there's very, very few qualifications that open doors the way an accounting qualification does. And that's my opinion on it. And that's the reason why I'm quite passionate about getting people through that and make themselves so much more credible and marketable. And that's where, yeah, I just love helping people. Just sorry to get back to 
if people want to contact me, and the reason why I love people contact me is this, is because the satisfaction that I get from from being part of the story of a guy becoming a fully qualified yeah. accountant because of the, the week before he wasn't even going to turn up. And that's the reason why I love now doing what I'm doing and having the conversations with, with, with like-minded people. A lot of, some of the conversations that I'll have in my sessions will not be accountancy related or exam related. We will be talking about books. We will be talking about personal development. We will be talking about going holiday. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, to me, it's a more rounded process. It's much more than just exams because I see this as, as a very much a, a personal thing. Well, J- James, look, I really appreciate you, you know, investing the time with us today and just maybe opening our minds up to more around how we can be more successful at our exams and also how we can leverage our what we learn during the process for the rest Completely. of our careers as well. So I uh, really appreciate making the time for us today. It's absolutely great. It's, it's great that two guys from Ireland can chat away with us. <laughs> It's 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 not uh, it's not unheard of of two Irish fellas chatting away all the time. We know how to we know how to talk, don't we? So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to know more about our guests today, their bio, and follow up on the resources mentioned during the show, you can find all the relevant links and more at sitnshow.com. There you'll also be able to get access to earlier shows, read the latest blogs. There's also an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter, which will give you heads up as to when the next show is coming out, latest events, news, and anything that's going to be relevant to help you have a fun, rewarding, and successful career in finance and accounting. And just before you go, we really appreciate your feedback. If there's something we can do better on the show, something that's not working, or something you'd like to see, even a guest you'd like for us to invite onto the show, someone who you think might be able to benefit you more and also the rest of our community, please let me know. You can email me. I'm at andrew at sitnshow.com or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a message so I know how you found me and we can connect. And really, it's our community that will make the show. If we keep engaging and driving each other on, we'll keep on building our strength in the numbers. And when all is said and done, if we can do the numbers better and finance better, we'll create more opportunities for ourselves, our friends, our families, our communities and our businesses. So until next time, have a good rest of the week. Take care and let's keep building our strength in the numbers.